you thought we were done with fractals but guess what we are not and today i've got this amazing effect using geometry nodes so i hope you guys are ready let's get right into it all right so like most of my effect this one's 100 percent procedural as well so uh, i've got this new blender scene here i'm gonna do a and delete everything and let's add a plane let's quickly hop into the geometry nodes editor and i'm gonna click on new and let's disconnect this geometry input from geometry output because again we're gonna use a cube mesh primitive in this to go ahead and create that effect right so i'm gonna connect this out and uh, we've got a cube now we'll do a shift a and add a node that is called mesh to points we're going to use the points on this mesh to actually create instances that we're going to later instance the same object on so mesh to points and i'm going to create the mesh here and let's bring in a join geometry node as well because we need our original cube so uh, let's plug this right here and let's plug the output from the mesh to point into the join geometry nodes since it's set up to vertices uh, can you see that each of the vertices of the cube now has a point on it but for this effect we're gonna use edges instead of vertices but again you can choose any of these options and this different one is going to give you a different effect or a different variation of your effect what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and instance something on it so then i'm going to bring in the instance on point node and let's instance our original cube back onto this point as soon as i do that can you see it just creates a lot of instances on it let's control the size of the instances that we're creating so for that we're going to just simply use a value node and plug this into the scale and let's bring down the value to 0 0.5 once we have this set up now uh, i've got a cube in each of each and every vertices of this object right but uh, what if i want to randomize it some way well how do we go about doing that well like i said in my previous videos right the best way to randomize something is with a random value node and to randomize this one i'm gonna set the minimum value to minus one and the maximum to one and let's take the value and plug it into the selection of the instance on point node now as soon as i do that few of the cubes disappear already now you can just simply control this maximum value to control the amount of cubes that you want in your scene so we've got our basic setup ready uh, now the last thing that i want to do here is uh, put this value to 0 0.7 the last thing i want to do is i want to add a realize instances node now why i'm doing that well it's because we're going to instance the same object again and again on on its uh, its relative instances right but if you don't realize those instances it will always give you the other cubes in the same pattern no matter how many times you you instance it on itself so to get a little bit more randomized pattern uh, we need to realize instances right so just make sure that you're doing that or else you'll probably end up getting the same pattern again and again what we are going to do is we'll select all of these four nodes and press ctrl g to just group this into one group right and because uh, we are going to use this entire group again and again uh, to just instance it more randomly the values that we are actually concerned about that we need to control is first i want to be able to control the scale which is already connected here and the rotation so i'm going to take the rotation and plug this right in here and the next thing that i want to control is maximum uh, so this is basically the maximum number of cubes that i want to add in my scene so i can just press n for november and go to this option bring up this menu go to this option for group and just change it to max objects also uh, what i would like to con control is the seed right so i'm just gonna bring that in as well now i guess i've got pretty much everything that i need so i'm gonna click on this option right here just go to go back to my original geometry nodes tree so now i've got this node group here which i can basically use to control a lot of things like for example i can control the seed as to where the cubes are appearing and i can control the maximum object that i want to add into the scene so let's keep it to 0 0.7 for now and uh, yeah that's pretty much it but what we'll do is now we'll duplicate this node group and just go ahead and plug this in again and bring our original object as an instance i'm gonna take the value node plug it into the scale and just do it three times you can add it as many times as you want or as many times as your computer can handle but for, but for the sake of this tutorial i'm just gonna keep it three times for now once we are done with this i'm also gonna go ahead and enable shadows and cavity so that you guys can see a little bit better of what's happening here the next thing that we want to do is we want to control its rotation somehow right uh, but i want a little bit more randomization in it so i'm gonna do a shift a again and add a random value 
new node again i'm going to switch it to vector because i want to separately control each of its uh, accesses right so i'm going to take this random value node and plug the rotation into the first two nodes and just uh, take a note that i'm not plugging it into the third one uh, and i'll get back to it why so we'll do that and then we'll click on this two max value uh, select all three of them drag it down and then add a driver in it so we're gonna type hashtag frame and just divide it by let's say 20. now as you could see uh, this is creating that effect that i'm actually looking for so i can even go a little bit faster uh, so let's say divided by 10 and uh, it's a bit faster than what it was before now we also want to rotate the original cube as well for that we can just simply come here do a shift right click and drag it down just make sure you have the node wrangler add-on enabled to do that so it just combines it uh, and makes it easier to add anything to the original one right so i'm going to add a transform node and just plug this right between here and we're going to animate the rotation value of this transform node so for that let's bring up our timeline i'm going to make this animation about 400 frames so let's go to frame one and let's insert a keyframe and let's go to frame 401 and let's add a value of 360 degrees to randomize a little bit more you can add minus 360 degrees to e either one of them or both of them or whatever so uh, once we have all of this, uh, can you see now we have this amazing looking cube that is also rotating in itself. You can also go back and uh, maybe add a minus value in these drivers as well. So just randomly select one or two, one or two of them and just give them minus values. It just makes it a little bit more erratic. So we are done with our animation here, but I'll show you a, a really interesting way to create a texture. It's something new that I had discovered while experimenting on it. So, but the drawback to this is that it only works in cycles. So uh, let's switch this spreadsheet to our shader editor so we can bring up our texture. And also I'm gonna go right here and I'm gonna do a shift A and add a set material node. And let's just select the material that we wanna edit. Now let's come back to our shader editor, select that same material. Now we've got a principal BSDF here. We're gonna keep that. I'm gonna add mix shader right between this and the material output. Also, let's go to our render scene and change it to cycles. Like I said, it only works in cycles, right? So just make sure that it switched to cycles. And I'm also gonna add a good HDRI so that we have a good lighting in here. Okay, so once we have our HDRI, I'm just gonna go back to film and just click on transparent so just so that the background's transparent right so now that we have got a scene set up to actually shade it so let's create a texture so the first thing we added was the principal bsdf and the mix shader now we're also going to add a noise texture in here and let's add an emission shader which we're going to plug into the second socket of our mix shader right and the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a light path node and let's take this glossy depth and plug it into the factor of our uh, mix shader now the noise texture we're going to take the color output and plug it into the color of the emission shader and right now it's it's there the effect is there but it's super dull right so we have to somehow exaggerate that for that we're going to plug in a hue saturation node right between here and bring up the saturation value right up to five and also increase the emission strength to five now as you can see that we can already see some of that shading that we are actually looking for so let's increase the detail up to 15 roughness all the way down to zero and scale we're going to bring it down to 0 0.6 i think that's what we uh that's what i went with right so i'm also going to press Control t and change the output from generated to camera and just plug it into the vector of the mapping node now we have this amazing effect in here i'm also going to do a little bit more changes in the base color so let's bring let's make it a little bit darker so that we can see what exactly is happening here and we can also bring up the specularity bring down the roughness if you like I'm, i like to keep it at 0 0.2 and you can make it metallic or not i guess that's about it that's how i created this and uh, that's how this amazing uh effect came into play so i hope i really hope that you guys liked it and uh, you enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to like share subscribe i'll see you guys in the next video